Hi, I'm Riley Rosebush. And I'm Jillian Baldwin. We're speech and language pathologists at the Down Syndrome Research Foundation. This video is about supporting the communication skills of individuals with Down Syndrome. We will talk about how children develop communication skills and what characteristics to expect. We will discuss how to set practical goals and will demonstrate specific strategies to support language development. First, let's think about how communication develops from birth. Early on, we use our bodies and sounds to interact with caregivers and to have our needs met. This pre-intentional communication includes crying, looking, making facial expressions, reaching and wiggling our bodies. We call it pre-intentional because these behaviors happen even if they don't mean to send a message to their parent. The next step of intentional communication happens when children reach the cognitive stage to realize they can use behavior to tell you something. For example, think about how an eight-month-old might reach and use sounds to ask for milk compared to the ways a newborn shows they're hungry. Some behaviors to look for that show the development of intentional communication could include pointing at something and looking at you, making meaningful gestures and sounds, or starting to use spoken words or signs. Yeah. Banana, good idea. Say, I want banana. Good work. It is important to recognize that children can communicate with you on purpose, even if they are not yet saying words. Later, as our vocabularies grow, we use conventional means of communication to share our messages. This includes more spoken words, sentences, and possibly writing or typing. His sandwich? Okay, let's... Tomatoes on top. Okay, tomatoes on top. Are you going... People with Down syndrome go through similar stages of communication development as typically developing children, but often at a slower pace. This means they might spend more time at a certain stage before they're ready to move on. Like all children, no two kids with Down syndrome are the same, and we expect to see a great deal of variety in development. Some features are more common in people with Down syndrome, but that doesn't mean that they occur in every case. Your child is completely unique and will have skills and a personality that are all their own. Keeping individuality in mind, we will now list some common features in the language profile of people with Down syndrome. First of all, individuals with Down syndrome can often understand more than they can say. Often, children will start to have ideas that they want to communicate before they are ready to speak. As children with Down syndrome get older, and we need to give them the tools so that they can keep communicating in broader circles of people and so that they can share more ideas and things that they're interested in so they can express that they're excited about seeing grandma or that they love Elmo or that they want someone to read them that favorite book again. Speech is one of the most difficult fine motor activities in the body so it can take a long time to perfect. One way children can express themselves before speech begins is through sign language. Sign language incorporates the visual modality, or sight, to support learning. We know that making sense of information you see, known as visual processing, tends to be a relative strength for individuals with Down syndrome. So if you use a sign to highlight a keyword as you say it, your child can see the word as well as hear it. Combining the auditory and visual modalities by presenting information you can hear and see supports learning. Take the horse out. Yeah. Out. Bell. No. In. Being able to combine sign language and, and speech into, you know, starting to say uh, his alphabets. And, and when he says, uh, when he signs for like water, he also makes the, the wah wah sound. And so he's moving toward that, and it's and it's absolutely beneficial. It's open. You want to open? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, it's so hard. It's so hard. Sign language helps children to develop vocabulary and language skills, while it also allows them to express themselves to caregivers. As their ability to use speech develops, 
speech will replace the signs they use. Some other relative strengths commonly seen in people with Down syndrome include visual learning. This means that they learn best through what they see. You can show pictures, objects, or demonstrations to support your child in learning concepts or procedures. Nonverbal communication. This means they can use gestures, body language, and facial expressions to express a variety of meanings. You can say a lot without even speaking. Vocabulary. We often see that children with Down syndrome know more names for people and objects compared to words for actions or describing. Finally, repetitive language is also a common strength. Things that we say many times a day tend to be easier to learn and use as a phrase. For example, see you later or all done mama. On the other side of the language profile, there are some skills that tend to be relatively more challenging. These will need direct teaching and focused practice to improve or support. Language challenges often include expressive language and grammar. This means putting words together to say correct sentences. It can be particularly difficult to build new and original sentences. Bacon. Ooh, check this out, Ethan. Some, Some bacon. bacon. Way to go. That was so Some clear. Eggs. Oh, very nice. Can I have eggs, please? Underlying cognitive skills. These thinking skills help us to organize and plan what we want to say. First, then, oh yeah. Good job. Auditory memory. This form of memory helps us to process and recall what we hear. Thank you. You're welcome. Speech quality. The clarity of our message is affected by sound articulation, stuttering, and voice characteristics. And finally, social communication or pragmatics the many unspoken rules, routines, and expectations we follow to make conversations successful. It is important to keep these common language profile characteristics in mind when planning communication goals with your speech language pathologist. The goals you choose and strategies you apply should capitalize on your child's strengths and interests in order to compensate for and improve the areas that are more challenging. Aim to choose functional goals that help to reduce frustration in your child's day. And focus on a very small number of realistic and manageable goals to reduce stress for yourself and for your child. A good guideline is to work on just one to three goals at any given time. In the early stages, when kids are still learning about sending messages intentionally, communication goals will target the ability to watch and learn from you. At home, you can do this through turn-taking and imitation play. <laughs> imitation can start with copying each other's faces, sounds, and words, or even actions like in a song. If you're just starting to practice imitating each other, it can be really fun to look in a mirror together and try copying each other's faces and actions. Boo. Okay, your turn. Peek a boo. <laughs> Peek a boo. This can be a good starting point to teach the skill of imitation, which can eventually lead to copying your sounds and words later on. When in your face, so surely show it if you're happy and you know. Clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it's Your child is also more likely to learn from you when they are engaged in the interactions. There you go. Get your child excited about communicating with you. Playing child-centered games like peekaboo, tickles, or singing songs creates great opportunities to engage and have fun. The people on the bus go up and down all through the town. When your child is engaged with you, they pay attention and learn from you. By focusing on imitation and engagement, you'll help your child to build the foundational skills for interactions that they need to learn higher level skills, like speaking and signing. 
At later stages, when children are beginning to communicate using words and sign language or picture symbols, goals will focus on learning new words, understanding and following directions, and saying longer sentences. When your child is using mostly one word at a time, you will focus on building vocabulary, as in the words your child knows, says, or signs. <laughs> Who's the next? Elephant. The elephant. At this stage, teach a variety of words, not just the names for things. Action words like jump or listen, social words like buy or please, emotion words like excited or frustrated, and describing words like big or soft are also important. When your child is using mostly two to three words at a time, you will work on putting words together in sentences. Okay, what did you do? Some parts of grammar, such as putting words in the right order in a sentence, or using small functional words like the, be, or, and. These words hold the sentence together, but carry just a little meaning. Following directions, using games like obstacle courses, barrier games, and Simon Says. Yeah. Okay, ready? Stop and listen. Put the green fish over the jellyfish. Go. Got it. Let's see. Yeah. Whoa, same. Okay. Or asking and answering questions. Keep in mind that concrete what, who, and where questions tend to be easier than the more abstract when, why, and how questions. Aw, where are you guys? In Vancouver. Yes. Oh, you live in Vancouver? Yeah. So was this in Vancouver or in Portland? Yes, in Portland. In Portland. When your child is beyond the two to three word stage, you might start to focus on overall communicative competence, in addition to language and speech goals. Some ideas to consider include telling and listening to stories, sequencing events such as knowing the correct order of baking cookies or getting ready for school, or taking part in a conversation. Whatever you choose to work on, please remember the key strategies for setting appropriate goals. Try to find the just right challenge by setting reasonable goals that are not too easy and thus not challenging, but not too hard and possibly frustrating or discouraging. This will set your child up for success, but be patient with progress and celebrate every small victory along the way. Think about short and long-term goals. There may be immediate priorities like safety, behavior management, and communicating for important needs, but also keep an eye on long-term goals like making and keeping friends, employability, and being independent. Think about what characteristics are important in a good classmate, coworker, or best friend, and give these skills a high priority. Once you have chosen one to three functional goals, you must incorporate daily practice into your existing routines at home. Attending speech therapy can be an important guide, but practicing just once a week is not enough to develop habits and to generalize these skills into your child's daily life. Brainstorm with your speech pathologist to think of natural opportunities to practice, rather than boring drill sessions that can feel like homework for both of you. The first strategy is to use routines. You can practice during meal times, bath time, when you're getting dressed, going shopping, reading books at home, anytime you're together. It's the way you use language during these daily routines that can help your child to understand and learn. To make sure your child understands what you say during these interactions, try and incorporate these tips. Reducing distractions in the environment, keeping your message short and simple, talking slowly, and repeating the most important words. Daddy's cup. Thank you. Sydney's cup. Thank you. You pouring? You pouring the tea in the cup? What are we going to do now? Oh, drinking. You want to cheers? Drink. 
Mmm. Is it good? Bless you. Mmm. Thank you. Adding visuals to enhance your meaning and giving lots of time for your child to respond. This means you need to wait and listen patiently. Pick a couple of goals and plan how you can build them into your routines. For example, how can you use your cleanup routine to practice using and understanding location words like in, on, and under? The second strategy is to play with your child. Experts know that children learn best through play. By joining in their play, you can model interaction skills that they can try too. See how this parent is engaging their daughter while playing. This illustrates the effective use of play strategies such as joining in what your child is already doing, teaching language by commenting on what is happening. Squeeze, squeeze. This models squeeze. the word that they would use if they could. Interpreting their attempts to communicate. Thank you for the cupcake. Oh, the cupcake goes in there. Thank you, Sydney. Do you have more cupcakes? And reinforcing their efforts by cheering them on, which makes it more likely that they will try again. We want to notice, read, and react positively to their signals so that they will want to try again and again. Next, Communication temptations and friendly sabotage are useful strategies that sound a little sneaky, but work to gently encourage your child's expression. You want that Expressive language can be really challenging for a child with Down syndrome. It takes a lot of effort, so motivation is key. Good job. Here's how communication temptations work. Try setting up an activity in a way that motivates them to tell you something or to ask for something. Let's think about an example. If your child often likes to play with a certain toy, try putting it in a clear container that's really hard for them to open by themselves. Your job now is to hold back from anticipating what they need and to wait patiently for them to come to you and ask for help. Then give them a word they would use if they could to make a request or to comment, such as open or help. Here you go. Be patient and give them lots of time to try it for themselves. Oh, do you need some help? Yeah. yeah. Help. Open. The other strategy for friendly sabotage looks like this. First, pick an activity or routine that your child is very familiar with. For example, putting together a puzzle or having a snack. Then, leave out an important piece or introduce something unexpected into that routine. For the puzzle, that could be missing one piece. Or for the snack, it could be giving them some yogurt, but no spoon. This is a chance to be silly and laugh at your mistake. But then give your child something that they could say, like, uh-oh, or spoon please, to fix the situation. Finger pacing or a pacing board can visually remind children to say a number of words without relying on reading. These two pacing strategies can also help to slow down fast talkers which goes a long way in improving speech clarity. Scripting helps a child to learn the flow of specific social interactions and can be adjusted to suit their current level. Rehearsing scripts in advance for common situations or topics can be a great way to build confidence before introducing themselves or ordering in a restaurant, for example. What we found with rehearsing the scripts with Harold beforehand is that it prepares him to know what to expect so that he's not walking into this unfamiliar environment. Um, he knows what questions he may be asked. We've worked on possible answers that he can respond with. So that's helped to make him feel more comfortable and have him be more engaged when he walks into these different situations. While it's important to set new goals, Make sure your child currently has a way to communicate effectively and to participate. Provide specific strategies and materials to meet your child where they're at now. Picture symbols are a strength-based strategy that can be used at almost any language level. Children can use their strength in visual memory 
to compensate for their relatively weaker auditory memory. Here you see a choice board with pictures of this child's snack choices at home. It shows and reminds him of his available snack options, and then he can express his preference by pointing to that picture. We like to use picture symbols from a computer program called BoardMaker that's available online. You can also find free pictures online using a simple Google image search, or use your own photos from your cell phone. This can be even more meaningful to your child. When your child's picture symbol vocabulary grows, you might find it easiest to organize the symbols together in a communication binder like this one. This is a handy way to organize and categorize larger symbol vocabularies. Sentence strips combine different picture symbols to build longer phrases. Some people benefit from a higher tech AAC system. AAC stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. There are very simple and complicated systems available. If the user knows what they want to say, but has difficulty getting their message out, high-tech AAC can give the user a voice at the touch of a button. The take-home message here is that all individuals need an outlet to communicate. Contact your local speech and language pathologist that specializes in augmentative and alternative communication to determine if high-tech AAC is the best approach for your child. If it's difficult for them to be able to use words and sentences to do that, maybe they're having trouble producing words and sentences or others are not understanding their words and sentences, then we want to be able to give children more tools. We often recommend using a total communication approach. Total communication combines all methods at a child's disposal. Use speech, sign language, or pictures, depending on what eases communication in that situation. This can help children to express their ideas more clearly and efficiently. My hope for my son is what everybody hopes for any of their children, right? I want him to be engaged. I want him to have a wide circle of friends, be, be social. And, and I think, you know, the communication piece is such a big part of it. So, you know, the more we can get him speaking and responding to people, that, that is our end goal. He is a very independent, capable young man now, teenager. This brings us to the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed our short introduction to communication development in Down syndrome. We wanted to get you interested in this area of development and to share some ideas that you can use immediately at home or school. We've talked about common language profiles in children with Down syndrome and the stages of development, how to set optimal communication goals, and examples of using effective teaching strategies and supports. Remember, one of the most beneficial things you can do for your child's language development is to provide frequent, supported opportunities to practice communicating in routines and play. Practicing every day can help your child to develop and generalize these important skills. There are plenty of resources available to help you, and we encourage you to connect with all of the support you can. Here are some resources to look for in your community and online. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Down Syndrome Research Foundation. Thank you for joining us.